Hello everyone, my name is Astha. I welcome you all to our classes for International English Olympiad for class 10th. Today is our 8th class wherein we will be discussing the topic of nouns. Nouns is pretty important. We will be, we will be doing the categories, the nominalization of nouns, all these concepts. So make sure you have uh, your uh, notepad with you so that you can write down the various categories and the concepts that we discuss for revision in the future. All right, let's get started. So our mission for today is nouns. अब हम मिशन इसलिए बोलते हैं क्योंकि हम जब ये अपना टॉपिक खत्म कर लेंगे आज का आज का जब वीडियो आप देख लेंगे तो यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट नाउन्स आर व्हाट आर द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ नाउन्स आप आइडेंटिफाई कर पाएंगे कि ये अगर जो वर्ड है इफ दिस इज अ नाउन देन व्हाट काइंड ऑफ नाउन दिस इज एंड अब डिफरेंट टाइप्स के आप एग्जाम्पल्स दे पाएंगे ओके एंड इन द एंड आई ओके क्वेश्चन सॉल्व कर पाएंगे सो इट विल सर्व ऑल दी पर्पसेस हमारा मिशन अकम्पलिश हो जाएगा ऑल राइट सो लेट स्टार्ट सो नाउ आ क्वेश्चन इज द फर्स्ट एंड फोर मोस्ट क्वेश्चन दट वी आस्क आर सेल्स इज वट आर नाउस हमें किसी भी टॉपिक को समझने के लिए पहले ये अंडरस्टैंड करना पड़ता है कि उस टाइटल का एग्जैक्टली exactly मतलब क्या है पहले हम इसका मीनिंग करेंगे और मीनिंग को बेटर अंडरस्टैंड करने के लिए उसके एग्जाम्पल से समझेंगे और फिर हमें एकदम कंप्लीट क्लैरिटी आ जाएगी जब हम इसके क्विज को अटेम्प्ट कर लेंगे और राइट so here we go noun is nothing but any person place thing or animal all right all these things all of them are nouns person jaise you and me jaise um your brother your mother your teacher all the persons they are nouns place for example uh, delhi india australia or mumbai all these places are nouns then things things could be say this laptop things could be uh, a pen things could be a charger things could be uh, some food for example apple all these things are also nouns all right then animals animals so we know dogs cats giraffe and say snake and squirrels all these birds and animals all of them are nouns as well so noun ki basic meaning we have to know which is any this means any person any place any thing or an animal any animal so a noun refers to any person place thing or animal all right well now that we have understood what exactly nouns are okay noun is person place animal thing so now we will do what are the types of nouns nouns mein various types hote hain and we will study each of them with their certain examples and then we will apply them to the questions so what are the various types of nouns okay so the first category is common nouns what are common nouns you see common noun is used to name general things 
places, ideas, events, or people. Now these are the things which a noun also is. But what is so special about common nouns? Common noun names these things in general. All right. When we are talking about any of these things in general, all right, they're general names. then that is referred to as common nouns once we will see the examples it will be clearer to you just have to remember and understand that common nouns are used for general uh, things uh, places or uh, events or uh, ideas or people all right next we have proper nouns now these proper nouns they you the names a specific person place or thing so again as common nouns they talked about general things or persons or, pe or places here proper noun the important part is it talks about these things in specific all right in specific like here and it is also important to know that a proper noun always begins with a capital letter like my name asha it is a proper noun why because it is because we are naming a specific person all right so my name starts with a capital letter and it is a proper noun all right right so here we will be taking up the examples of common noun and proper noun together like here you see in the first picture what are we talking about we are talking about certain fruits so we are naming these things in general or specific we are talking about them in a general manner so these are fruits is a common noun but here when we are talking about the fruit in specific a specific fruit which is what watermelon so it becomes a proper noun all right so this is these are this is the broad difference between common noun and proper noun that common noun is used to name things or people or places in a general manner whereas proper noun is used to refer to them in a specific manner all right okay so let's take a few more examples okay so here we have this table again let's see um we have to see common nouns and proper nouns here you see coach now when we are referring to coach we are referring to a person in general or specific we are talking in general like a coach can be any person but when we say coach martin this one means that we are talking about a proper noun talking about a person specifically right then we have teacher similarly this is a common noun here this is a list of common people basically coach teacher here we have soldier again dentist waiter but when we name them specifically like here miss johnson corporal daniels dr hughes scott so when we name these people specifically it becomes a proper noun and again here we have common nouns of places like school government store amusement park beach but when you are referring to a specific beach This becomes White Haven Beach. Then we talk when we talk about an amusement park specifically, it's the Disney World. Then we are talking about a store specifically, like Target or any other store, right? So similarly, these are proper nouns. Why? Because we are talking about the place specifically. Here, um, okay, we have common nouns of things. For example. like painting like a river ocean planet game but when we are talking about some painting specifically that specific painting mona lisa this becomes a proper noun mississippi river the pacific ocean 
earth the game monopoly right here you see we are talking about them in a specific manner so they become proper nouns these are proper nouns all right so here we see this is a group of boys okay and next here we see there is a single boy now this is a group of boys and i want to ask you who is your best friend can you name somebody for example let's see now these boys these boys would be a common noun why because as we discussed common nouns they talk about general general people general things general general terms mein jo baat hoti hai so boys they could be and when we are talking about one specific one out of these for example who is your best friend you'd say ali so ali would be a proper noun kyunki hum ek specifically ek boy ki baat kar rahe hain okay this particular boy we are talking about that is a proper noun all right all right here you have again a few more examples like firefighter if you refer to firefighter is a person specifically or generally here we are talking about uh, firefighter in a general manner but when we talk when we talk about captain james we then we are talking about captain james specifically then uh, suppose when we say husband we are not uh, telling about someone's husband in particular right but when we name that person that becomes specific right similarly we have wife felicia queen queen elizabeth so these are common nouns of persons these are proper nouns then again we have a few places like island airport palace building and these can be said specifically in terms of proper nouns like hawaii kennedy airport buckingham palace or white house all right so the broad difference that i have been trying to tell you is that common nouns are the places or persons or things are uh, in general whereas the proper nouns are the persons or things or uh, places in a specific manner all right all right so here we have another category of nouns these are called abstract nouns what are abstract nouns the ones which have no physical existence okay what do we mean by them not having physical existence is they refer to certain ideas or emotions or concepts that you cannot that you cannot see cannot touch cannot hear cannot smell or taste okay so these are those nouns which do not have any physical existence they are what do we say intangible in nature you cannot you cannot really uh, touch them or smell them or taste them all right we will see the examples and it will be a bit clearer to you now we have a few examples of abstract nouns here what you have to notice here is that all of them not none of them can be seen or touched or heard or smelled all these have no physical existence like ability adoration advantage adventure amazement anger now you may see we can sense when somebody is angry right when uh, their face shows like there's this uh, like this there's this emoji over here as well but anger is something that has no physical existence you cannot touch anger you cannot taste anger you cannot smell anger right so that's why 
all of these are abstract nouns they have no physical existence annoyance anxiety awareness about something beauty and compassion and confidence confusion curiosity death dedication defeat delay dishonesty divorce friendship the example that we saw generation goal gossip growth happiness now when somebody asks you how happy you are you cannot really measure it and say uh, there is no unit for measurement there is no unit for you know your uh, growth your uh, emotional growth um and uh, there is no measurement for somebody's height you can you can just sense it and just say that uh, you know i am very happy or i am i am i'm very scared and i have a lot of hope for example or um i'm horrified and similarly for life it has no physical existence cannot be smelled or touched loneliness loss love luck luxury right here we are not talking about the luxurious things mind you you have to be very careful here when we start talking about luxurious things for example if we talk about a mansion or a bungalow now that uh, becomes another category of nouns that is not an abstract noun because that is something that can be touched it can be seen now if you're talking about a big house or you're talking about an expensive car that car can be touched it can be seen it can be felt and it can be heard as well but luxury is something that you feel luxury is a form of life and uh, that you that you uh, that you live all right similarly for maturity mercy mercy means forgiving someone giving them mercy movement needing something need right rumor sacrifice satisfaction um self control service shock silliness skill and sleep so let's move on have a few more examples as well these are pretty easy you know you should pause the video and uh, have a look at them for yourselves and give a read i'll just quickly read them for you belief belief bravery brilliance calm care chaos charity childhood we took this example remember clarity coldness comfort dream dreams have no physical existence education elegance envy evil failure faith fascination fear fiction freedom hurt idea we took this example infancy infancy is uh, is the infant stage when uh, you are very young only a few months or a few years old then that's that's infancy then inflation inflation refers to uh, the rising prices suppose um, suppose there's a particular there's a particular car which was which was which was uh, for 10 lakhs last year and now this year it is for say it is for say 12 lakhs so now that car has inflated rising prices then intelligence irritation joy justice kindness liberty lie opinion opportunity pain patience peace pleasure 
power pride relief riches sorrow success surprise talent trend trust victory weakness wealth wisdom worry so let's move on so now now we have done three categories of nouns okay first was the proper nouns second was the common nouns now and the third was the abstract nouns now we are moving on to the fourth category of nouns which is collective nouns now collective as its name suggests what is in the name collective collective can be uh, can be a synonym of collection you know collection collection means group so the group of people animal or things that is a collective noun all right we will give you examples and then we will uh, understand it better right now what you have to understand is a group of people animal or things that is referred to as collective nouns all right so how do we form them how do we form collective nouns this is the formation collective noun plus of plus the plural noun whatever noun we have uski plural form yahan par aayegi and uska jo collective noun hoga which we will study now collective noun plus of plus plural noun you should write down this formation and we will see this in the upcoming slides okay here collective nouns for collective nouns of people we are talking about first for example if we have a um, certain morris dancers we say a side what is the collective noun here side a side of morris dancers if we have pipers we say a skirl of pipers right there are certain candidates for certain job or something uh, some opportunity so we say we don't say a group of candidates rather a group of candidates is called a slate a slate of candidates models we say a slouch of models a sodom of shepherds squeal of nieces staff of employees staff of servants as well stock of foresters superfluity of nuns tabernacle of bakers tantrum of decorators team of athletes and a team of players a tribe of indians a troop of acrobats a troop of performers females ke liye bhi say a troop of females and a troop of males all right this one was for people now next like for sea animals here you see we say a bind of salmon a company of angel fish a family of sardines a fleet of bass a float of tuna tuna fish a flotilla of swordfish a glint of goldfish a herd of sea horses and next we have sea animals here as well a party of rainbow fish a school of cod a shiver of sharks a shoal of fish a troop of shrimp a swarm of dragon net fish a squad of squid a shoal of mackerel now you don't have to worry you don't have to remember all these by heart uh once you will see the questions jo hum end mein quiz karenge jab aap wo questions pad lenge samajh lenge so there will be only a few jo aapko yaad rakhne honge in fact 
आपको याद रखने की भी जरूरत नहीं है यहाँ पे रट्टे नहीं मारने होंगे यू डोंट हैव टू रोट लर्न ऑल दिस आप वंस यू सॉल्व अ फ्यू क्वेश्चन एंड इफ यू कंटिन्यू रीडिंग एंड बींग इन्वॉल्व इन द लैंग्वेज तो जो जो थोड़े से कॉमन है ना ये द कॉमन कलेक्टिव नाउन्स वो आपको एनी वे याद ही रहेंगे सो दीज आर जस्ट फॉर योर रेफरेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल सम सॉर्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चन कम्स एंड यू डोंट सो दीज आर जस्ट फॉर योर रेफरेंस आप इससे अपनी वोकेबलरी बढ़ा सकते हैं आई एम जस्ट गिविंग यू एग्जाम्पल्स सो नाउ अ फ्यू मोर Here we have for birds. All right, we will do only a few important ones. For example, you see a brood of chickens, and for the hen also we say the same, a brood of hens. And for penguins we call it a colony, and for vultures again we call it a colony. For parrots we call it a company. Now you see, हमने formation कैसे करी थी? Formation we said the collective noun. plus of plus the plural form right so here is the plural form for example if you see of eagles eagle ki plural form is eagles and convocation is the common noun so common noun plus of plus the plural form so convocation of eagles all right Here again, we have a few more collective nouns for birds. Uh, a flight of birds is the most common. You should remember this one, and you remember for crows also, murder of crows, and this one a host of sparrows, and a stand of flamingos, and a pride of ostriches as well. And you see, this is quite funny. For a group of owls, we call it a parliament. A parliament of owls. Now for amphibians, reptiles, invertebrates, insects. Now for the collective nouns, there is no limit. In fact, for nouns only, there is no limit for giving you examples. Uh, after all, what we did, what are nouns? Nouns are a noun refers to any person, place, animal, or thing. Right. Now there are so many people. There are so many places, there are so many animals, and there are so many things. अब हम सारे examples नहीं कर सकते हैं, right? So I'm just giving you a few of them, just for your reference. For example, here frogs one, an army of frogs. For dinosaurs, we call it a herd. All right. For snakes, we call it a den. For crocodiles, we call it a bath. is the formation you remember the collective noun plus of plus the plural form of the noun now next there are a few more you see a bale of turtles mm a culture of bacteria army of caterpillars flight of butterflies colony of ants swarm of bees and a clutter of spiders now for mammals these are few interesting ones for example a colony of rabbits colony of rats colony of seals then for pigs we call it a sounder a sounder of pigs for cows it's a flink for deer it's a herd and for donkeys as well and for bisons as well it's a herd and for lambs it's a fall for race horses it's a field a field of race horses these are a few more we have elephants we have heard again we have a pack of dogs a pack of wolves 
and a sloth of bears, troop of goats, troop of monkeys. You must have heard about this. Now you see a few common ones. You must already you must already know. You just won't have known. कि इन्हें हम collective nouns कहते हैं. वरना जैसे a pack of wolves, a pack of dogs. ये सब you must have heard in the in some of the movies or you must have must have read somewhere, right? Now next. Another one we have for things like uh, a pile of money, a deck of cards, a bunch of keys. And a fleet of ships, fleet of vehicles, chest of drawers, pair of shoes, library of books. Roll of film, set of tools, album of photographs. You must already know that photographs का जो group है, we call that an album. All right. So most of them are very common, and you must already know. You would have known, I think. Now next. Okay, so uh, now we are done with the abstract nouns. We have done four categories of nouns: proper nouns, common nouns, and abstract nouns, and collective nouns. Now we are moving towards our fifth category of nouns. Okay, this is pretty simple. Here you see, now there are two different words. One is a cup. and the other is a cake both of them are absolutely two different things but if we combine those two words we can form another completely new word which is a cupcake right similarly here butter a completely different word fly a different word but when we form them together we again form a new word which is what butterfly butterfly has no connection with butter or flights an absolutely new word which is a butterfly similarly here sun plus flower makes a sunflower and book and shelf makes a bookshelf so these kind of words they are called compound nouns so what are compound nouns when there are two words which are formed to make an absolutely new and different word word that is the compound noun we have a few more examples like pop plus corn makes popcorn foot and ball makes a football rain and bow makes a rainbow moon and light makes a moonlight all right these are also what these are also compound nouns Now here are again I have given a few examples for you to understand better. I'll just quickly read them: shoebox and butterfly and star and fish, starfish, ear and ring, earring, hair and brush, hair brush, hand and bag makes a handbag, wheel and chair. Two different words make an absolutely new wheelchair. Straw is different. Berries are different. Together they make. strawberries now the next one another few of for you to go through pan and cake makes a pancake rain and bow bow is the is kind of an accessory rain and bow makes a rainbow grass alag hota hai and hopper alag hota hai but both of them when combined together make grasshopper similarly for jelly beans and similarly for bath tub okay so here we are going to do a small topic but important one 
one more category we have is of countable and uncountable nouns okay now as its name suggests it is pretty, it is pretty easy to understand also countable nouns are the ones which we can count using numbers all right and the uncountable nouns are for things that we cannot count using numbers all right and these countable nouns can be singular or plural and here we can use a or an for their singular form but here it is difficult to tell for the countable nouns it is difficult to tell whether they are singular or plural they might be some ideas or some abstract things let's see the examples here for example i have a big house एक अ बिग हाउस नाउ हाउस के इज काउंटेबल के एक घर है दो घर है दस घर है कैन दे कैन बी काउंटेड राइट सो इट इज अ काउंटेबल नाउ देन ब्रदर्स आई हैव शी हैज टू ब्रदर्स सो दिस इज आल्सो काउंटेबल राइट बट हियर व्हेन वी सी अनकाउंटेबल नाउन्स वी सी आइडियाज एंड थिंग्स लाइक नॉलेज एयर फियर सो दीस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दे कैन नॉट रियली बी counted that's why we call them uncountable nouns all right so in addition to the category of nouns we have done this is the um, this is also important but this is pretty easy to understand right countable and uncountable okay let's move on okay now we have this uh, sort of sub topic for nouns which is nominal nominalization what happens in nominalization is we the con conversion of uh, a verb or an adjective or um a verb or adjective mostly to a noun okay so how do you form a verb how do you form a noun from the other grammar topics like verbs and adjectives now for this there is no single rule however uh there diff there could be different categories like either adding a prefix or suffix or adding an adding an article or adding a possessive which we will be see or which we will we'll see in the further slides okay all you have to know is nominalization is what conversion of a verb or sorry conversion of a verb or an adjective to a noun all right the basics now the first one is like adding a suffix suffix is what something that you add at the end like uh, act act is a verb block is a verb run is a verb in them you add a suffix to form a noun like act uh, act becomes action block becomes blockage run becomes runner all right that's nominalization of nouns Okay now here we have different forms of suffix which could be added to a verb or an adjective to form a noun like here we could add any ss to form form nouns from adjectives like sad is an adjective convert gets converted to sadness the closure of the post office brought sadness to the community so sad is an adjective when we add ness becomes a noun sadness then next up adding ity um uh, the suffix to form noun from adjective adjective here is hilarious now hilarious we add ity it becomes hilarity they reacted to the joke with much hilarity all right this is another form of suffix another form could be ance or ence form noun from adjective or verb like here we have important important is an adjective here we convert this to importance never underestimate the importance of studying right okay another category could be adding ment to form nouns from adjectives or verbs like merry merry is a verb and actually could be an adjective as well we change uh, we add ment and this becomes merriment the children found a lot of merriment in the clown's antics all right 
Then we could add T I U N or S I U N to form nouns from verbs like multiply. Multiply becomes multiplication. Like how? I like addition and subtraction, but multiplication is difficult. So we add T I U N. Then here we have admit. For admit, uh, we add S I U N. The suffix. The criminal's admission of guilt got him in trouble. All right. Then we have ship. We could use ship or hood to form nouns from other nouns themselves. Like partner. Partner is a noun in in itself, but we could add S H I P and create another noun which is partnership. Then we have another one which is neighbor. Neighbor is a noun again in itself, and we could uh, we could change it to a uh, neighborhood. Uh, our neighborhood is thankfully very quiet. All right. So these are the various suffix. we could which we could add okay another uh, option is to just add an article now if we just say run now run could run is a verb but if we are talking about a particular run it could be a noun if we add an article to it like a run or the run similar for act now act uh, otherwise is a verb but we could add an article to it and it Does the job of a noun then? Another thing we could do is add a possessive. How? Um, like here, daily routine. Her daily routine. Going for my walk. So you know, when we add possessives like me, like my, your, her, his, then uh, it becomes a noun. All right. these are the various rules that we could follow for nominalization all right now another category or another uh, another sort of questions which would come are forming the possessive form of nouns how do we do that that we'll study but first of all knowing what is the possessive form now this possessive form of noun is used with nouns referring to people groups of people countries and animals and what does it do it shows a rela relationship of belonging between one thing and the other shows sort of possession and belongingness all right let's see um, how so here how do we form them how do we form the possessive of nouns to form the possessive we add apostrophe apostrophe and s to the noun if the noun is plural or already ends in s then just add an apostrophe after s okay pretty easy here like we studied just adding an apostrophe and an s like here my uncle's house And clothes for my sister could be called my sister's clothes apostrophe and s all right pretty easy and here if the noun already ends in s or is plural then after this s you add an apostrophe like shop of smiths that smiths shops job of manus manus job Day day of for children, children's day, and the day for teachers, teachers' day. All right, so S and apostrophe. Now it's time for a quiz. We will uh, do the sample questions of I E O and understand each question and try to find their answers. this will be like a practice for you this will be like a mock exam for you all right so for the quiz what we will be doing is now every question you will be given 1 minute 1 minute means 60 seconds why am i giving you 1 minute because you see your question paper of ieo it has about uh, 50 questions and so you can uh, imagine that you know you get more or less a minute 
to answer the questions. Now this one minute is the maximum that you should be taking for answering the question. Now suppose there could be two, three, two, three categories of students. First category is suppose you answer the question within that one minute. So I would request you to fast forward the video and uh, skip right to the answer. You should not be wasting your time. All right. Now the other students who are not able to answer the question in one minute, what you do, you don't skip to the answer. You pause the video and you write down your answer. All right. It is very important to answer each and every question because there is no negative marking. Here you see for every incorrect answer, no points because there is no negative marking in IEO. So it is important that you attempt all the questions. Now for a question of which you are not sure about the answer. Now even here and even in the exam, if you are not sure about the answer and you maybe think that B option is might be correct or C option might be correct. So you should uh, in that case play your luck and play your mind and make a guess and still give an answer because it is a win-win situation. Either you will get the marks for that question or you will get a zero, right? But if you don't attempt that question at all, then you are anyway getting a zero in that, right? So it is good to attempt those questions. And uh, even if you don't know all the answers, try to understand and take a guess. Okay. So this is for every correct answer 10 points. This is just for your, uh, for your own little game where you can try uh, to maintain a notepad. So here you write the name of the chapter and then the question and then if it is correct, you can give yourself 10 points. If it is not correct, you mark it here. So it is important to mark to see these questions, the ones which you mark incorrect. It is important to go back to them later and then see where you did the mistake. All right. This is just for your reference for every correct answer. You can give yourself 10 points. All right. Now let's uh, start. So your time starts now. All right, so now we start off with the questions and nouns. Here what we have to do is complete the following sentences using nominal, nominalization of the underlined verbs or adjectives. Nominalization we have studied. So we'll be uh, nominalizing this verb or adjective, whatever is underlined in the sentence. So here we have the girl, my grandmother departed yesterday. Her dash is the cause of my affliction. Her departing, her department, her, her departation or her departure. Okay, so here the verb is depart. The adject uh, and the, this is in the V2 form, departed. The verb is actually D-E-P-A-R-T. So this is formed by adding a suffix, U-R-E, departure. Okay, the correct answer is D. 
her departure is the cause of my affliction so your time starts now Okay the telephone rang the dash of the telephone startled all of us the telephone rang this is the verb to ring okay options are ring rang and rang now as we read some verbs they remain the same and we just add an article to it so adding of the article the the ring of the telephone startled all of us the answer is a So your time starts now. So here we have this contestant is really beautiful her dash has mesmerized even the jury okay so beautiful is what it's an adjective changing the adjective um into a noun nominalization beautification beauty beautifulness or beautifying here the answer is her beauty we add the possessive her beauty b okay So your time starts now.
Next up we have, I am getting my book published. Its dash will certainly shed the common superstitions about the subject. I am getting my book published. Published is what here? It is a verb P-U-B-L-I-S-H is the word publish. So here we have to change this to a noun, nominalizing it. Publication, publishing, publicizing and publifying. The correct answer is A. It's publication which certainly shed the common superstitions about the subject. So your time starts now. Next up we have, yes, she answered the question and everybody in the hall was dumbfounded by her uh, answering, answer, answerable, answerability. Yes, she answered the question. The verb is what? Answer. The verb is answer. We have to nominalize it. And the here, how do we nominalize it? By adding this pronoun here, by her answer. It remains the same. So your time starts now. Okay, here we have, you must explore new areas to substantiate your research. This dash will certainly earn you fame in this field. This exploration, this explore, this exploring or this explorization. Explore, the verb is explore and uh, this is the verb. How do we normalize it? By adding A-T-I-O-N, T-I-O-N, remember we learned? So the correct answer is A. This explorization, sorry, this exploration, I'm sorry. This exploration will earn you, will certainly earn you fame in this field. The answer is A. So your time starts now.
Next up, the king has dismissed the minister's nephew. This dash is going to cost him dear. Dismissed. The verb here is D I S M I S S. Okay, to dismiss someone. That's the verb here. So uh, to form the noun, nominalization of the noun will be by adding a l. This dismissal. Correct answer is D. So your time starts now. All right. Next up, we have Indians love to conform to the traditional values. Their dash sometimes stops them from evolving further. Conformism, conformation, conformability, or conforming. Okay. Here the verb is conform. Conform. C O N F O R M. So how is it nominalized? By adding T I O N. Correct answer is B. Their conformation sometimes stops them from evolving further. So your time starts now. Okay, here next category replace the underlined verb in the given sentences with the correct option. Here, what we have to do this is all the questions of nominalization. The verb is underlined. We have to nominalize the verb. Let's see. Admit to a good school is not easy these days. The verb here is what? The verb here is admit. Change it to either admitted, admitting, admittance, or admission. Pretty easy. The correct answer is Uh, adding s i o n suffix admission to a good school is not easy these days okay so your time starts now
Next up, we have celebrities neither show their excitement nor express their frustrate in front of the media persons. Frustration, frustrating, frustrates or frustrated. The verb here is frustrate. Okay, change it uh, to a uh, noun. Frustrate, adding T-I-O-N. So the uh, word becomes nominalized to a frustration. T-I-O-N. Okay. Do not express their frustration in front of the media persons. So your time starts now. Next up, we have rich people think that only the poor are responsible for land pollute, while it is their own garbage cast around the poor localities. The verb here is pollute. The options are pollution, pollutes, polluting, and polluted. Okay, pollute is the verb forming a noun, nominalizing it by adding T I O N. Correct answer is A. For land pollution. All right. So your time starts now. Okay, next up, what is your impress of the new appointee? Impressed, impressing, impression or impresses. Impress is the verb, changing it to uh, a noun, nominalizing it, adding S-I-O-N. Impression of the new appointee. What is your impression of the new appointee? So your time starts now.
here we have my weight keeps fluctuating so my dress is always need alter altered alteration alternating and alternate okay dress is always need alter the verb is alter nominalizing it we need to add t i o n alteration answer is b my weight keeps fluctuating so my dress is always need alteration so your time starts now all right now we have a different category here we what what we have to do is choose the correct countable and uncountable nouns okay. bring me dash of water some glass of water a glass of water piece of glass of water or all glass of water pretty easy the correct answer is bring me a glass of water okay water is an uncountable noun so use a glass of water So your time starts now. Okay next up I am looking for dash for the windows a glass for the windows some glass for the windows many glasses for the windows or some glasses for the windows okay I am looking for the correct answer is some glass for the windows again glass is something that's uncountable so we use some glass for the windows all right So your time starts now.
Okay, here we have this chair seems to be made of dash, but it isn't. Seems to be made of irons or some iron or an iron or iron. This chair seems to be made of iron, but it isn't. Iron is what? Uncountable noun. So your time starts now. Okay, next up we have, I have been to the States lots of times, much time, all time or some time. So here the correct answer is, I have been to the States lots of times. This is countable, the number of times you've been to some place, that is, that can be counted, right? So I've been to the States lots of times. So your time starts now. Okay, here I will have to purchase dash to iron my clothes. I don't have any. I will have to purchase a sheet of iron, some iron, a iron or an iron. Okay, so here the correct answer is I will have to purchase an iron. To iron my clothes, I don't have any. Iron is a countable noun. Can be count you can count the number of irons, right? So your time starts now.
Okay, next up we have the USA is dash a democracy, some democracy, and democracy or democracy. The USA is a democracy. Democracy is something that is uncountable. Okay, USA is a democracy. So your time starts now. The child was licking ice creams, an ice cream, a ice cream, or many ice cream. Okay, here the correct answer is the child was licking an ice cream. Uh, ice cream is countable, of course. And uh, yeah, also we use an because it starts with uh, it starts with a vowel sound. Don't use a. And here many, many is used, but there is no s. So you see, this is the, here the formation is also incorrect. So your time starts now. Okay, here we have to the correct option to complete each sentence. Last five questions. Hots. There was no end to the which wicked, wickedly, wickedness, none of these. Uh, we have to um, we have to use the noun. What is the noun here? C. Wickedness. Wicked here is an adjective describing uh, something wickedly is an adverb of manner answering the question of how. Whereas C, wickedness is a noun, an abstract noun. So your time starts now.
Okay, next up we have almost everyone has some musical ability able about or ablative. Okay, here the correct answer is everyone has some musical ability. Ability is a noun, an abstract noun. Other able, able is a, able is an adjective. Ablative is also an adjective. So your time starts now. Next up we have Sheena is happy with the usual living dash. Arrange arrangements the rangers are arranging. She is happy with her usual arrangements. Arrangements is a noun. Living arrangements together becomes a compound noun. And here arrange is a verb. Arrangers, uh, I am not sure. Arranging, verb plus ing, gerund form. So your time starts now. Okay, next up we have there are 100 dash in a pound. There are 100 pence, there are 100 penny, there are 100 uh, in a both A and B or only B. Okay, so here the correct answer is A. There are 100 pence in a pound. So your time starts now.
All right, next up we have chess is the oldest of all games which does not contain an element of chance. Chess is the oldest of all board games, table games, panel games or top games. Okay. Chess is the oldest of which games? A okay. board games pretty easy. This is a sort of board games. Board games together forms a compound noun. All right? Okay? So yes, with this we finished off our questions on nouns. That's all for our class on nouns. I hope you have taken down the notes and make sure you revise them in the future so that uh, you know so that there is not in, there isn't any confusion or isn't any confusion or messing up that you do in the answers. So that's all for this class. Keep revising them and keep relearning. I will see you the next time. Thank you for watching.